Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Septilence had to go, but we've got the wonderful Waffles stepping in on play-by-play -play for this next matchup where we're going to be having Fairfield University facing off against St. Peter's University. And these two teams coming up have a bit of a difference on the leaderboard as St. Peter's the last couple of weeks have been able to secure a few wins, putting them to 8-4 and four at our 6th seed. And Fairfield is going to be at 4-9 and nine at our 15th. Oh, yeah, it is going to be, you know, an, an interesting matchup we have with the, well, we'll see what they bring to the table here. Uh, like you said, St. Peter's is ranked sixth at the moment, so higher in the rankings, but still have some, some left to prove there uh, against the other upper teams. Yeah, and it wouldn't be the first time that we've seen an upset happen, especially when the meta is in such fluctuation. I don't want to say fluctuation. It's in freedom right now. There's a lot of uh, wiggle room as far as what you want to bring to the table. And we've seen a lot already on stream. The Hammond, the Winston, the Reinhardt, the Zarya, the Diva. I mean, we've seen pretty much all of the tanks. It's a pretty nice meta to be in. I totally agree. And as someone with you know, someone who watches the game and our viewers too, getting such a diverse experience all the time. We've been, we've seen those old Overwatch seasons where it's the exact same meta over and over. We always see the same characters played. And well, here we really get a chance to see the diversity teams have in their arsenal, right? A lot of metas mm -hmm. really get you kind of cornered into a certain role or team style. And well, when the meta's not locked in, the freedom is there for them to choose their poison. And I'm liking the different compositions that we're seeing already off of the bat. Fairfield University going for a bit more of a, a hold our ground composition while St. Peter's going for the flyby composition, which really focuses on getting a little bit of damage in and then allowing the Tracer and the Winston to just collapse in for some burst. We saw St. Peter's do a little bit of a jump up there, but oh, they are actually the first person to go down in this fight with Blob getting taken out. He is brought back to life very quickly after that, but uh, we'll have to see if he can continue bringing a uh, you know, strong contribution to this fight. He gets chipped down again and does manage to finish off the Ana as well. And well, frankly, St. Peter's is looking real good now that they've got the advantage and they're just gonna clean up Fairfield and cap the points. Yeah, pretty quick take from St. Peter's, they didn't even have to finish the fight. And uh, one thing you'll hear me say a lot is finish your plate. You really want to make sure that you're not allowing anybody to get out alive. You want to get all that ult charge for yourself, but they didn't have to. They were able to get those first few picks and then position themselves to where Nachos and Rez can deny the re-entry from Fairfield onto the point and gain a lot of control. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see also what Blob wants to do with this dupe coming oh. up. Uh, and, oh, yeah, Ooh is right. The dupe comes through even after they've already gotten the pick. Reinhardt charges through, and, well, uh, with Blob's dupe, it's probably going to be easy cleanup here. Is, yeah, an Earth Shatter quick. They're going to have to retreat. Nice consolation pick, though, from Walk to take Sellout Squad out of the equation because coming into this next engagement, Fairfield, as long as you back out, Allow for that health regen to come in from spawn. Well, never mind. Min Min got the res. My 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 point is is no longer valid. Nah, point is moot. That's fine. Good job though for Min Min, keeping everyone alive and well, not having to wait for that teammate to come back from spawn means they don't have to gently regroup and give any ground. The Ant Matrix is popped though for this engagement from St. Peter's and it is a good thing. The Earth Shatter came through and they were there and thankfully still able to be topped up through that Ant Matrix. Now Fairfield has launched their own sound barrier for this assault and we can see that Adric is trying to do his best to find anything here in the middle, but unfortunately Tracer just zips away from him and pulls him almost completely completely out of position away from his team. It is and it's a bit rough as a Reinhardt in that kind of situation. Masks got separated onto the other side of the point, so you lose your Lucio. You don't have that speed boost anymore. And I mean, who on St. Peter's University do you even target at that point? Tracer can blink away, Echo can fly away, and the Winston and Hammond aren't even in your vicinity. 
Ooh, and when you don't have your teammates nearby, it is rough. Overtime has been triggered though, so it is every it is up to Fairfield to even stay on the point and try to keep a presence here. Doesn't look like it's successful as OT is just gonna trickle down and well St. Peter's takes this a hundred to zero. Ouch. Yeah, a very strong showing from St. Peter's University to come out the gate, and this is something that I expect them to do um, kind of consistently, just because where they sit in the standings right now, just beneath Quinnipiac for their conference, they need every single win they can get. So the fact that you're playing up against a team that may not have a better record than you doesn't matter right now. You need to put the pedal to the metal, and you have to secure the win. Yeah, and well, they're going to be going into, you know, eventually some type of playoff game and you want your ranking to have Five, as you want to be as high ranking as possible. So you're seated as, be yeah. as like best as possible as well. You don't want to be going up against some of the top teams and get knocked out early. Uh, but, you know, there's some strategy behind some of that as well. The doors have opened and, well, we can see that both teams are headed towards the middle of the point with St. Peter's going for the engage first. They do have the quicker comp, so not surprising that they have made it and established themselves onto the point early on. Uh, Winston is diving forward, but it uh, looks like everyone is there to continue reinforcing him. Uh, is getting peppered and pushed back and well it looks like they don't have the resources especially after Riggs comes up with two to hold this point and this is a bit of a, a batter and a batter and push kind of composition now out of st peter's they've gone away from the flyby tactic of kind of just finding what picks they can on the edges of the fight and now they've got blob and Riggs working together the reaper pushes up front the Genji dashes through the back, and there's nowhere for Fairfield to go that St. Peter's can't reach them. And there's so much burst damage that it's difficult for Gil and Masks to collectively play effective supports for Fairfield. It is tough for those supports. And well, Gil has been landing some really good antis. It just doesn't seem like the follow-up is quite there to capitalize on it. Oh, the Nanoblade though, here it is. It is popped in favor of St. Peter's and well, he's not finding any kills surprisingly. It looks like Fairfield was ready to repel that. And well, they have that spawn advantage definitely there to help keep them alive and mitigate a bit of that damage as well. And Walk's the one responsible for mitigating that damage blade. Came out on the fire, was able to hit a key concussive blast to move Riggs away from securing a kill. Didn't have the dash online anymore, so wasn't able to close that distance. And an anti nade comes through really nice, but you know, mostly a discouraging anti nade. Oh, I thought he was gonna get. He is not gonna escape after that. That was not a very sneaky uh, teleport, in my opinion. But uh, Soundberry has come through for F Fairfield as they are gonna continue to, you know, try to hold this area. But oh man, Blob is going to death blossom and just decimate their backline with it. And this is where you need to start playing catch and receive. If you're Fairfield University, you're, you're getting outplayed in the front line. You're, you're getting kind of battered down. The Reinhardt really has not been able to be as effective as you want it to be. So you need to start catching their DPS. When the Genji comes in aggressive, when Blob just teleports into the middle of your team, you need to have some sort of plan to immediately eliminate that threat and put yourself into a body advantage. And well, we are in OT, folks, as the fight is breaking out here on the point. The grab is thrown, catching many members of St. Peter's, and well, Fairfield is actually coming out on top for this fight. It looks like they are able to flip this point in their favor. They've given a couple, uh, quite a few ultimates up for this fight, but it's worth it if they're going to be able to cap it and hold it right at 99. And for Fairfield, this is this is you you can't you can't mess up at all from here on out. It's 99% for St. Peter's University. They have a, a Dragon Blade coming online as well as their minefield. And you see Rez go over to the ro Roadhog. He's there to exploit the mistake and find the pick. And well, right now, Minefield has been thrown here by Nachos. Doesn't quite find too much, but oh, Blob coming up big with two after that. The barrage has tried to be found, but it is shut down so quickly by Riggs, who is just slicing away with that blade one after another. And well, unfortunately, members of Fairfield have dropped one after another. I don't think they're going to be able to recontest. Lucio is going to do his best to try to zip over their last moment, but oh, just kidding. He decides to dance it away instead. <laughs> Losing to the tune of their own music. That's one way to go about it. <laughs> the Peters are definitely going to be able to take this first map, and they've shown us a pretty good example of what's to come. We got to see 
Um, the the full on mobility composition with the Hammond and the Winston, uh, as well as the Genji Tracer, and now we got to see a little bit more of a stagnant dive in 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 a fashion where that um, that Genji is still an element, but now you have the Reaper who they played with a lot of mobility, but traditionally just there to make sure that when that Reinhardt drops his shield to pressure, you're able to put out so much damage that it becomes not an option. And that's what we saw. Fair, uh, Fairfield just wasn't really able to push the envelope, wasn't able to make space. I totally agree with you on that front. It seems like they were really retreating away from the fight regularly. And I would have liked to see them, I mean, at some point you have to hold the front line and you have to, create those advantages and opportunities for yourself, or at least try to seize any of them. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it is rough when you lose one player, but if that seems to be consistent, you know, at some point you do have to just go for it and say, this is our, we got, we got to, we got to make a stand. Um, and, you know, I would really love to see Fairfield really pick it up and maybe tighten up some of that communication and focus fire. Those antis coming through, we're solid. I just would love to see some capitalization on those. We saw the Hammond get really, really low a couple times. Thankfully, he pops his shield, but uh, you know, there's still there's still that opportunity. Yeah, and and coming into our next map, as we we are going to be going to Numbani next. It's going to be a situation where what Saint Peter's is currently running fits like a glove. That first point of Numbani is it's impeccable and it's an imperative that you go for both high ground control and have the versatility to contest the point. And a composition with the Hammond, with the Genji, with the Winston can do exactly that. Yeah, well, I mean, mobility is the name of that lineup and Numbani has a lot of topography variant. And I mean, a lot of our maps do that are preferred and actually quite a few, Route 66 will too, if we actually make it that far. Um, but having a team that is that mobile is, I would argue, one of the more critical things, especially when it takes a really long time to walk all the way around to get to that high ground or to reinforce your teams or your teammates. And uh -huh. if your teammates have to drop out of position to run away, then it takes a long, and it takes a long time for them to walk back. You got to manage that timing well. <laughs> Now, I don't expect for this to be the composition that Fairfield brings to the table, but if it is, I'm <laughs> kind of okay with it. Because when you are swinging up the ladder, the leaderboard, one of the things that can give you that edge is to surprise them. Yeah, well, if they're not ready for this uh, potentially really fast-paced Bastion Sim combo here, where you can move around and then output a horde of damage uh, without the focus fire to take down the Bastion, they could be shredded very quickly and totally caught for, you know, like a U-turn, essentially. Looks like, uh, oh, not too sneaky, but the TP is gonna go ahead and be launched there across the way. There's Wilk, or uh, W, yeah, there's Walk trying to just continue to pour the damage in here. He's being protected by his Reinhardt and his teammates. This is a great little bunker corner here. You can see his health pool hasn't even dropped that low. This is the first time he's lost his armor and, oh, finally gets taken down. We do have a trade though back and forth and wow, Coalescence is already online coming out from Gil. It looks like Fairfield is doing a lot of work here and throwing a lot of resources to try to cap this first point. Right now, St. Peter's is a bit scattered all over the place, but those dragons are tearing through and just putting in the damage. After that follow-up coming out from Nachos, it is a reset coming through for Fairfield. And a beautiful jump from Riggs to start off this defense, jumps just to the right of the teleporter so that the knockback from that jump actually knocked great aspects off of the high ground. So they weren't able to contribute damage into that fight. A couple members of St. Peter's University dropped down for that and they're able to get the upper hand, but a big early pick from walk two. Oh, wow. I mean, if one wasn't good enough to shut down something, shut it down, two definitely is gonna be a great way to seal the deal. Uh, if that's, Fairfield is gonna have to push in on that for sure. The Bob is thrown though, trying to mitigate some of those teammate losses as, well, we saw Min Min come back real quick with the Valk. She gets taken down again by Walk. And well, once again, not an 
I'm sorry, Walk is just on fire, shooting left and right, and well, he is helping Fairfield cap this point as they continue to push forward and try to prevent them from recontesting. And you can see St. Peter's already positioning to allow this Winston to drop on for a little bit more of a contest. Already has the jump, so he'll get two touches. But the rest of the team not going to come back through from spawn. And all I want to say is, why has Walk not been on Hanzo this entire time? <laughs> that was impressive. That was amazing. And it was exactly what Fairfield needed to even the, even the tables here. Look at this, yeah, continuing no. to be an impactor. And winning the Hanzo duel too is also really huge. Uh, hopefully Nacho's mental space is, you know, withstanding some of those rougher shots that might come through. But uh, all in all, he has just been tearing it up. He has those dragons online too. And well, quite frankly, Fairfield has quite a lot of resources to be able to continue this push. Hopefully they can keep this momentum rolling as, oh, the sleep comes through for Adric. He is woken up quickly and the Earth Shatter drops a few. He gets dropped himself just as quickly. And well, the dragons from St. Peter's tear through the payload once again, uh, not finding too much on that front, but Fairfield is not giving up on this push. Their own dragons gets launched, finding Min Min and well, going back and forth still as St. Peter's does manage to find two picks additionally. It is a kind of a gentle mid fight here as Fairfield is going to back off a little bit while they wait for some more teammates. Yeah, they're going to have to back off completely now. That Primal Rage just got picked. You want to get as far away from the rest of St. Peter's University so that you can focus down this Winston just like that. And now Fairfield are going to have the upper hand. They have a Blizzard as well as a Graviton coming into the next fight. And since they're the first grab out, they're going to be able to get a little bit of an advantage. But sadly, nobody from St. Peter's University is in either of those ults. There was no one caught in it, but... I guess it doesn't matter when you have capped it to the second checkpoint. Uh, they know they've got a lot of time to be able to continue to push and cap this third point. And well, with the way that Fairfield has been playing this round, it's possible they could absolutely be bringing something different to the table than what we saw for that first map. We've seen a great amount of aggression coming through and well, now they have, they have been grabbed themselves and oh, the wombo combo of the dragon grab is gonna be a bit too much for them and well, that's going to be a reset for Fairfield. And speaking of too much, St. Peter's committed the nano boost there as well onto Riggs on the Reinhardt, uh, possibly trying to get that ult, the, the Shatter back online because Bob and Coalescence uh, on their own aren't too much to worry about for Fairfield University, whereas they're going to have a Shatter and a Dragon coming up. Oh, well, let's shatter. A walk, walk gets picked early from that fire strike. So uh, a lot of that front pressure and shield breaking opportunity for Fieldfield has been removed from the equation. Looks like they're going to wait for their Hanzo to come back, which honestly doesn't surprise me too much since he has been just absolutely on fire this match. The Earth Shatter comes through and it is blocked by Adric. Not, uh, not sneaky enough coming through. Easily telegraphed there. Uh, Coalescence comes through for St. Peter's, trying to keep the Reinhardt alive, but it is not going to be enough. Fairfield looking good as they continue to press the W and charge forward, hurting St. Peter's back into their spawn. Walk trying to get those last few picks, and well, he scanned, or he has Sonic arrowed them and scanned them out for the rest of his team. Everyone knows that they're headed this way. Bob is on the point now, holding preventing the payload from moving forward as Fairfield backs off a little bit to give some space here and, you know, respect that auto turret that comes through. Uh, after that, looks like uh, they are going to do a full reset. Yeah, they're going to put themselves all the way back to spawn because they have multiple win conditions online right now, and they need to be able to execute these before St. Peter's gets comfortable on this corner again. And mainly, we're looking for Anis and Walk to pair up on that grab dragon combo. And it looks like the, the grab came... Oh, I heard, I thought I heard a grab, but I didn't. <laughs> Counter grab comes through from Rez before Fairfield can put theirs onto the field. Wow. However, just... beautiful immortality field. Yeah. A, what a, just a fantastic clutch immortality field. Fairfield swept St. Peter's off. The blizzard is thrown to continue zoning any members that are trying to contest. And well, that was a completely, I would argue, almost a completely different team from Fairfield. What a great round push from them. And one of the differences that you're seeing here is the map type 
that we're encountering. When you play Control Point, you do get to play a little bit more brawly, deathmatchy. You know, you get to kind of let your Genji just do whatever he wants. The Reaper can play super aggro, but here on these payload maps, you're going to be fighting as a team nine times out of ten. And so the synergy of your team and how well you're be able to able to read what they what your enemy plans to do is how you win the fight. And the perfect example of that is the counter grab that came out from Fairfield. They put out the counter grab with the dragons at the same time because they knew that Min Min's immortality field, or sorry, Poviga's immortality field was no longer online where Masks was. So they had the upper hand and were able to keep themselves alive and push the payload through. Just big brain, big brain plays coming out from the healers there, keeping everyone alive. Um, even on that Bastion push, I was really impressed that he survived as long as he did. And well, honestly, his armor didn't even deplete for the majority of the time until right before he died. So huge props to them for being able to, you know, keep everyone up and well, help execute the, the strat a bit. A little bit of a cheese, Sim Bastion Strat, if that's what you guys call it. And now they're going for an older composition with this Roadhog mixed in with the Orisa. You have a lot riding on Adric actually being able to pull off these halts. We'll have to see if the communication is there. We know the halt hook combo, uh, the H squared is a bit nasty, especially when all that focus fire comes through. Fairfield here is holding the high ground and well, they've actually forced St. Peter's to already use immortality field and and they've used their own as well. Right now, the fight is a little bit scattered here on the point as both teams are engaging. Reinhardt trying to put his, hold his own, but oh man, they are going down left and right as St. Peter's takes the advantage and starts removing members of Fairfield from the point. And that was a good read from St. Peter's to realize what the Roadhog was trying to do. The Roadhog was trying to get on point to be a bit of a bullet sponge to allow for his DPS to kind of take advantage of the, the chaos created in that. Hopefully he can drag, you know, the Lucio or or maybe maybe Blob out of the open and into a situation where the rest of his team can help dwindle them down. But St. Peter's just kept focused on, on the problem at hand. And I'm sure Fairfield recognized that they needed to make some changes themselves. We can see that they have changed their comp around a bit to try to combat them and, you know, hold, a, hold their own better. So far, the engagement so far, St. Peter's is pushing forward, trying to do the same thing Fairfield did to them and keep space and prevent them from being able to contest any. They do have an exchange back and forth, so we'll have to see if Fairfield can hold their own without their tank. But uh, right now, their healers are doing great work as the immortality is, feel is popped, keeping their Reinhardt alive. Now, Gil pops his coalescence. He doesn't get caught by the Earth Shatter, but a couple of his other teammates do. Looks like it's gonna be enough though as well, a kill comes through from Adric onto the opposing Reinhardt. Now that one of the tanks has been removed from the equation of St. Peter's, it's gonna be a good advantage for them. But once again, they have flipped it around. Adric himself has gone down and well, now it is tied up and we they have the same amount of numbers. We'll have to see who can come out on top after this as both amplification matrixes have been popped and well Riggs just decimates after that cleaning the members of Fairfield up. And Riggs has kind of been the MVP for me right now on this St. Peter's squad. The Zarya being completely controlling and honestly, you know, shielding and dominating in areas where the, the punish needs to come through from Fairfield. And it looks like the DPS from St. Peter's just aren't allowing for people to collapse onto Riggs. Yeah, it looks like Riggs also has, is not really feeling any of those effects from the recent uh, patch change with your charge uh, depleting quicker. He has been very strong and very charged for a lot of this round and, well, it totally warrants your, you know, uh, play of this match here. And the grab is thrown coming out from him. Members of Fairfield are stuck in it and they are cleaned up after that. Moira oh. can't even escape herself. Ooh, that is going to be tough for Fairfield to even try to hold it. I don't think they're gonna be able to hold it here for this third point. They're gonna have to do something different. And oh, Riggs is finally taken down and another person gets caught by the dragons as well. It is St. Peter's opportunity here to, uh, I'm sorry, it is Fairfield's opportunity here to hold this third point and actually stem some of the bleeding that St. Peter's has caused uh, right now. 
right, oh man, Nachos is just putting in a lot of work. Both DPS for St. Peter's just carrying their team and cleared everyone. <laughs> and that's all because of Blob and Nachos. Blob <laughs> sat off all the way to the right and Nachos sat off all the way to the left. And then we saw a little bit of tunnel vision from Fairfield. Their Reinhardt took the charge and their Zarya um, immediately took to following. So what you do there is you, you put your tank line past their DPS line to the point where their DPS now have an effective crossfire to to easily take them out before they could be re-engaged. Can't touch the payload at that point, and that crossfire just gets cemented, makes it very difficult to come out of spawn. And with crossfire, that also means your opportunity to hide behind natural co cover is significantly uh, more difficult. And, you know, maybe not even viable because of the crossfire and the cover and support that they lend each other when they're, you know, pressured or anything just is very discouraging for anyone trying to push into that or contest a third point like that and trickle out one after another. Yeah, and if you're Fairfield coming into this next attack, your goal is first point. You you don't need to worry about streets phase. You don't need to worry about the third point right now. You need to worry about taking this quickly. Because your initial go, you were able to to get this, but it took you two pushes. This time, it needs to take you one. Yeah, they only have 120 left on the clock, so not a horde of time. And they've instantly been scanned out there, so not going to be surprising as far as team comp be going up against. St. Peter's is going to be ready for them here on the high ground as Fairfield is going to push up forward. We'll have to see who decides to stay up here and hold the line. <gasps> Rez is the first person to go down though. And well, he is brought back up just just as quickly. Uh, they are even now. And well, Fairfield is still peppering here from above, trying to create that opportunity for them to push. They are looking for a pick as they you can see Walk trying to continue to fight against those other DPS across the way here. And well, he is getting pushed and bullied back into that hallway just a bit more than he probably cares to. Both Hanzo's just slinging it across, not finding too many kills here. And well, 30 seconds left. They're gonna have to make any kind of move at some point if they're gonna they're gonna cap the point. They're gonna have to drop down and make and create space for themselves. <gasps> Rez actually opens up with a kill and another one to follow up. Oh man, this is gonna be disastrous for Fairfield as they get grabbed on top of it. There's only 10 seconds left and Moira here in the back uh, just gets cleaned up after that. That's, Pretty, that's uh, all she wrote. Yeah, that is, took the words out of my mouth. Thank you. <laughs> and um, a really, troublesome piece of that and i've used the word tunnel vision already once with fairfield but walk for a good 15 20 seconds of that attack held the arrow waiting for the ana to make a mistake on on positioning and it, it's not going to happen you know Pavika, there's no reason for that mistake to be forced out from the ana there's no pressure going on to her she doesn't need to move so the, the amount of time spent waiting for a mistake to happen when there was no catalyst to cause that mistake, I believe that cost walk a little bit. Could have continued that duel with the opposing Hanzo or Ash, and you get one of those picks. You force the Mercy to the high ground, and you get a similar story to what we saw the first time around. I was hopeful after seeing, you know, I was hopeful for Fairfield after seeing the first pick onto Rez as the Reinhardt. Um, he was brought back very, very quickly right after that. So not really any chance to deny that Rez. I do think that he probably fell down just in time to die. So the body, his, his soul, more arguably, <laughs> was in a safer spot for the Rez. But, you know, we're going to have to see some changes coming through from Fairfield's defense and it does look like they've opted to go the Bastion route again for this defense. Um, they got a lot of time bank to hold. <laughs> I want to say I'm okay with this, but I'm really not because all that St. Peter, they, they have four minutes and, and the Bastion composition is, is one that it gives the enemy a lot of time to think about what they want to do, switch it around and, and execute that. Oh, Nachos and with the that's... opening pick. That is going to be rough for Fairfield to play defense on. And, well, that is the go button for St. Peter's. They got that pick. They've shredded the shield. And, well, Walk is also taken down himself. 
Members of St. Peter's are continuing to flood onto the point one after another, and Fairfield is just desperately trying to mitigate any of that, but it looks like it is gonna be a clean cap there for St. Peter's. A clean cap indeed, and um, at this point in the season, at this point in the split, this is kind of what you expect when it comes to these matchups, just because you know these teams are beginning to feel really, really comfortable in their matchups, and a team like St. Peter's, whose wins and losses have been all over the place. We've seen them beat some of these higher up teams. We've seen them um, lose to some of the lower teams. It's been a little bit up in the air, but recently they've been on a really good streak. And, and based on what I'm seeing, I expect that to trickle on into map three. Yeah, I agree with you there. We've seen some pretty, you know, all over the board gameplay, but uh, hopefully St. Peter's can either stay the course and hold strong, or maybe we'll see Fairfield University bring something more and, you know, really clutch it out and reverse sweep this if possible. But, you know, we'll have to see what, what comes next. Um, our next map will be Volskaya. But yep. before we go, folks, we will, we're going to take a quick break. So grab a drink, grab a snack, and we'll see you back here for Volskaya. Hey folks and welcome back. We are here seeing Fairfield University face off against St. Peter's University. If uh, you know you're just joining us after this break, we are currently 2-0 in favor of St. Peter's University. Now, Scheidel, what does Fairfield really maybe need to think on or focus on more to break through kind of this hole that they've dug for themselves going into this third map at 2-0? We've seen some interesting compositions come through and you know we'll have to what do you think about it in my opinion keep going with the interesting compositions keep trying the fun stuff um because that little little kink into the works that bashing composition it almost worked the the one thing about that that didn't work for them was the fact that the bastion ended up getting positioned a little bit too close to the edge so the pillar did a lot of the blocking of the damage not to mention nachos picked the Torbjorn right out of the gate. I don't think they were ready for that. Yeah, so <laughs> I'd like to see them. I like the fact that they're continuing these surprise compositions if you don't know where exactly we're going to be or how we're going to play it. But yeah. once you get onto the point, you need to be able to focus your targets down. And I don't talk, I'm not talking about the tanks. I'm talking about Blob. Blob on the back line has been given so much freedom. He needs to have a leash put on. Yeah, he needs to be contained at some point. And well, the charge comes through and holy smokes, it is successful there on to walk. St. Peter's is really doing a great job defending against this, you know, wonky comp coming through from Fairfield a bit. And well, that is just a full on repel. 
Yeah, and um, Blob did something. <laughs> I feel like that's a pretty good way to, to summarize how that attack went, but um, uh, St. Peter's went left, Blob went right, and just got to, to, to put in as much damage from the outside there for pretty, pretty much, much free. And um, trying to get support ults up there from Adric, but that might backfire because you still haven't regained that health. Yeah, it took a little bit longer to regain that health than I was would have probably expected. Oh. oh, but the anti coming in, it is good, but it's not going to be enough for them to be able to capitalize on. <gasps> she gets taken out from the side. She didn't even know Symmetra was there. And the res is going to be easy money, though, for Min Min as, well, that Symmetra got taken down and the threat removed. Oh, man, it is going to be another reset coming through for them, Shidal. And a curious decision to demit to commit masks to uh, to go and help aspects there. Once that res comes through, you just kind of have to concede that fight. You have a pocketed Ana as well as a Genji in that room. It's a, a very difficult situation for any solo DPS to handle. Yeah, well, and St. Peter's has a horde of ultimates online coming up as well. So we're probably going to see a lot of... Uh flashing lights and probably this blade coming through probably a nano blade um but all in all st peter's doing a good job here backing off as fairfield is trying to just poke through this main archway they decide to opt through and well blob gets that nano he dives straight into fairfield who is ant matrix and sound buried themselves but wow he has gone full avatar state as he just mowed down everyone on fairfield and the key there was the fact that he was able to avoid masks for the first kill. So he avoids masks on the first kill, jumps up, and then masks boop actually just sent him straight upwards. So it didn't actually put any distance between the Genji and the rest of the team. So it didn't negate the dash or the dash reset and allowed Blob to really just have a field day. With 60 seconds left, they're going to have to do something to shut down St. Peter's. <gasps> the grab comes through, and, well, they are all stuck there in the high ground. And one goes down, and, well, they're down a man for this next push. Hopefully, they can still make something out of it, like, you know, the good old San Francisco shock. But it's not looking good, as Great Aspects also goes down after that. Nacho's just continuing to put in that nice crossfire and backline work that we've seen him do. And... Holy smokes, it is all DPS all in the kill feed. Yeah, Blob and Nachos are getting their due diligence in right here, right now. And already another blade up for Blob. They are going to have another shatter coming into this. Uh, barring a six-man Deadeye and a hu or a huge shatter from Adric, St. Peter shouldn't have too much of a difficulty here. But Walk doesn't need a Deadeye. Oh, got some picks early here in the fight, but this is last fight territory. We see that Blob pops that blade and he has just been absolutely lethal on it, left and right. Fairfield is trying to make a stand here on the point and do their best to cap, but right now it is just the Reinhardt and the Lucio trying to stall their hearts out against the Genji and the Mercy. It's not gonna be enough though, as they both go down. Hopefully they can't even touch. Oh man. I gotta say, Blob's nano blades for any Forge in the Fire fans here, it will kill. Man. <laughs> <laughs> I get that reference. <laughs> Doug would be proud. <laughs> uh, Firefield's got a really, really big task ahead of them here because they only, they have to defend the point, but they don't get the luxury of defending the whole point. Oh, with only 75.7% .7 taken in their favor on the first go around, St. Peter's only needs 75.8. So you really need just over three quarters of the point. And for a team that's playing as quickly and aggressively as St. Peter's University, that's a that's a one push, two push, uh, a goal to reach, in my opinion. Yeah, with how St. Peter's has been doing, I don't know if... It's possible it could be just a one push here with such a far spawn walk back time as well. Um, if Fairfield gets staggered just just enough, they're gonna have to like only trickle fight coming back to point, potentially. So hopefully they can, you know, maintain a really strong defense here. They've got that Widowmaker. So maybe St. Peter's will be ready for it. I don't know, what do you think? 
Um, I feel like the way that St. Peter's is playing this is that they're going to position their supports in the back and let Rez kind of drive the bus while Riggs, Blob, and Nachos, their whole job is to get quick picks. Nachos goes in for the disruption into the back line. There you see it on the Lucio. He pops out. Blob goes in with the dash to finish up on some damage. And now without even using their shield, they can get some space and find themselves into a good position. Ooh, and well, right now we can see St. Peter's moving around here. Oh, the sleep is good though from Gil onto that Roadhog. He's not gonna get overly punished for it, but he is discouraged, which is absolutely enough sometimes. But he's come back, not discouraged enough. I can't believe nobody followed up with his on that and continue to protect their Ana. He, she gets dashed right there as she is so low. And well, St. Peter's is now on the point here looking to cap. Looks like everybody here is doing some early celebration and uh, some reflection on this evening's games. Oh no! And <laughs> a victory suicide as well. And that's that's a quick uh, quick 3-0 for St. Peter's University. And you know, if you've been watching from our first match today, it's kind of been the, the story to be told. Uh, playing a bit of three overwatch here today but um big surprise for me that last go round uh, diva goes to the high ground to help the ana battle the roadhog roadhog gets woken back up but it didn't seem like that was communicated it didn't look like when that roadhog came back up that stairwell that the ana was expecting it at all yeah i you know i'm surprised that her team didn't at least come over to reinforce and further discourage that Roadhog from pushing up that hallway. Uh, he retreated a little bit, but nobody paid enough time to him to, what is it, seal the deal and, yeah. uh, you know, really commit to it all the way, like you were mentioning at the beginning. Gotta follow and through on your plays. Yeah, you gotta finish your plate. That's that's, that's the, what it is. There you go. That's the, that's the saying. You gotta make sure that you know you're you're coming into those situations, and if you start to get that upper hand, you can't relax at all. You have to keep the pedal to the metal and completely take that enemy team off of the board. And that's what we saw St. Peter's do in a lot of situations, whether it was chasing somebody down for a late stagger or or getting that early pick and immediately hitting that go button. Uh, but you're going to be able to look at some of the highlights that we've seen in our Fairfield St. Peter's uh, matchup here in just a second as we're going to be going to a break. But we're also going to have a treat for you after that break in the form of an interview with one of the St. Peter's members so that we can get a little bit of an insight into that St. Peter's play style. Yeah, I'm excited to see what... Yeah, just 
Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. And we've got a treat for you right now. We've got Min Min in the booth from St. Peter's University. Min Min, how are you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you? Doing great. Just watched a, a master class if I will, on, on Overwatch. And, and speaking about that, there's there's a conversation I wanted to ask you about, and that is what your in-game leader situation looks like when you're playing the game, because it did not look like a single thing was missed and the communication was really there for your team. Definitely. Like, I feel like our main tanks are definitely the leaders, the in-game leaders for our team. They're just always on point with the callouts, with who to focus, with if anyone's flanking and like they're definitely like the backbone of the team very nice very nice nice yeah well you know we have those people that are the backbone of the team but you know i'm actually a bit more curious as to who is the glue to the team you know you have those people who may be leading or shot calling more but who actually would you say unifies you guys and keeps that morale up and uh keeps the hype there for you all um, I would definitely say it's our team captain, Rez. He's he's just like the overseer of everything. He's always on point with our schedule, with what we have to do. He's definitely the glue that keeps us all sane and untilted. That sounds like a team captain that is prime right there. <laughs> I see what you did there. <laughs> Um, and you know, a lot of, a lot of talk about the tanks, you know, whether that's being shot callers or, or the glue to the team, but I want to take a look into the back line. What does the healing structure look like for you guys? I saw for a lot of the situations, um, as supports, you played fairly separately in who you targeted. Is that an intentional thing or is it kind of a, a fly by the seat of your pants? Uh, just make sure everybody stays alive kind of situation usually. Since our best are such carries, like sometimes I just am hard stuck mercy and pocket them. So usually that's what happens in our matches. Um, so yeah. Nice. There you go. That's a good yeah. explanation for it. I was wondering why the mercy <laughs> was always in the front, but that's a perfect answer. Yeah, I mean, if you know that he's gonna put in the work that actually warrants the pocket, then you know you're probably feeling a little safer up there in the danger zone. Um, you guys do have a match coming up against St. John's, so, you know, it is a rematch against them. Um, are you guys doing anything special to prepare or get ready for that, either mentally or gameplay-wise? Definitely, like, ever since our defeat, we've just been talking strategy, the, the meta. We've definitely been uh, practicing Brawl more often, and we've been VOD reviewing, like, more than ever before, just because that defeat really was an eye opener for us and we want to like do better. Nice. Well, if you guys can, you know, evolve from the last match and grow from those VODs, I wish you the best of luck and really look forward to seeing your matchup. Thank you. And before you leave us here, Min Min, I do have to ask because we've got to give you your stage to, to stand on, your soapbox to shout from. Any shout outs, thank yous, plugs, this is your time. I can't forget anyone on my team. Like everyone on the team is so like chill, so amazing. Like don't know where I'll be without them, but definitely our MVP is Goonman. Shout out to Goonman. <laughs> well, there you have it, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you so much for joining us, Min Min, and congratulations once again on the win. Please take our congratulations with you back to your team. Okay, thank you. And with that, ladies and gentlemen, it's going to wrap up our Overwatch day here at EGF. We've had a long day of 3-0s, a lot of really big showings of talent and some teams that have a little bit to work on. But we're going to have to leave you with just a couple of things. Stay safe, don't be toxic, and have yourselves a wonderful evening.